Joining me now, Derek Johnson, president and CEO of the NAACP and executive director of Black Voters Matter, uh, Cliff Albright, and Angela Rye, po politics and cultural commentator and host of the podcast On One with Angela Rye. Now, we should note Cliff and Angela are actually in Phoenix where voting rights activists are holding a rally today, which is Dr. Martin Luther King's actual birthday. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Derek, I want to kick it off with you. There's new reporting out this morning that you uh, and other civil rights leaders met with Senator uh, Kirsten Sinema. Tell us what happened in that meeting. Well, we tried to make the case how important this was, the fact that a procedure rule should not block substantive rights to vote, uh, that she, among many others, have supported or they claim to support voting rights. But to say they're unwilling to remove the filibuster or do a carve out is nonsensical, to say the least. Uh, and that was earlier this week. In fact, that was on Wednesday. Uh, but we've seen what happened after the fact. Both she and Manchin reverted back to uh, their original posture, as well as the 50 Republicans, 16 of whom supported reauthorization in 2006, but holding fast because they are too myopic to expand the party's platform to, to attract new voters. They want to suffocate the pipeline uh, to access to the ballot box. Yeah, you know, this is a, an interesting challenge, Angela, uh, because, look, Cinema is a Democrat, but she is in many ways upholding white supremacy. You and I both know what the filibuster was originally used for. Take a listen uh, to some uh, remarks that she made this week, and then we'll talk about it. When one party need only negotiate with itself, policy will inextricably be pushed from the middle towards the extremes. And I understand there are some on both sides of the aisle that prefer that outcome, but I do not. I don't think I can roll my eyes hard enough, and you kind of just want to say, girl, bye. But Angela, I'll let you take it. What's your thoughts on the senator's position? You know, it's um, rooted in falsehoods, right? Like this is, we're talking about voting rights. We're not talking even about abortion, which we all know has been historically divisive in this country. What we also know is that voting rights has been supported on a bipartisan level in both chambers of Congress since 1965 when a Democrat signed the bill into law. So what I would tell Senator Sinema is to please reflect on your history. Not, not a wobbly voice, not an emotional plea for people to remove or to not remove the filibuster when you just could cross that hurdle, right? This, I'm sorry, about this year, they could cross that hurdle. So why can't you do that when it comes time to protect voting rights? The other like serious mistake that senators are making right now is deciding that this is somehow a black civil rights bill. It is not. This is a bill to ensure that this country continues to move down the road towards democracy. I agree with Jesse Jackson Jr. who recently said we were moving towards democracy. And this is a way to ensure that we're back on that right road. It is a way to ensure we're back on that right road. And, and in this uh, case, she is a hurdle on that road, Cliff. Um, you and uh, my, my good friend Latasha Brown, uh, the co-EDs of Black Voters Matter, you guys opted to not attend President Biden's speech this week. Um, I'm curious, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to address uh, some of the, the vitriol that was directed your way. But in a much more uh, collegiate atmosphere, my colleague Jonathan Capehart wrote about um, your decision to not go. Um, and he essentially said that, you know, activists shouldn't be turning their um, or, or shouldn't be rallying against Joe Biden and Harris. I don't know if that's what you guys are doing, but essentially that you guys should organize uh, against Cinema and Manchin, which, of course, is what you've always done and what you're doing today. How do you respond to people who felt like your absence was disrespectful um, to Madam Vice President Kamala Harris and, and President Joe Biden? Yeah, good morning, Tiffany. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not about disrespect, right? But it is about accountability. And what we were basically saying was that we thought that it wasn't the time for, for another speech. All throughout 2021 would have, would have been a great time for speeches, but it wasn't time for another speech. And it was a, a time for action, right? The, the kinds of actions that, you know, we've seen since the speech. One, he, he came out and he said that he unequivocally called for modifying the filibuster. That was a good step, right? A little late, but a good step. 
But more importantly, the actions that they started to take afterwards, which was, you know, what did they do? They, they met with, he met with the caucus, the, the Democratic caucus in the Senate. We had been asking him to do that for months. Uh, they started making phone calls and, and meeting with folks. He had meetings with Manchin and Sinema, which we had been asking him to do for months. Heck, I'd even like for him to tell him, hey, y'all, let's go to Camp David. You know, if, if Camp David could be used to solve international conflict, surely if we spend two, three days in Camp David, I can find out from y'all what we can do to, to modify this filibuster. So we wanted actions, and that's what our position was. It wasn't about disrespect. It was all about having people be held accountable. The same way the movement, Dr. King, SCLC, SNCC, would often have to do the same things to hold folks accountable. But it was very frustrating. Um, you, you all know how it is. I know all, all, all three of you all know how it is on, on social media, and, and you get folks that'll come after you. But to see folks coming after my dear sister friend comrade, Latasha Brown, who she and I have been doing this work for, for three decades. You know, for three decades, we've been up in these streets. And when I say in these streets, that includes some dirt roads of Alabama that we used to walk on, you know, 30 years ago. Derek knows about that. And so, you know, for folks to be coming after, after her or after me talking about, you know, where's your work? Like, for real? <laughs> you know, and so, yeah. um, you know, and, and to say, why don't y'all go to West Virginia? We've been to West Virginia. I've been four times. I've been to West Virginia four times this year. We've supported groups in West Virginia. We've supported groups in Arizona. We've been talking about Mansion and Cinema all year long. So to hear folks talking about why aren't you talking about Mansion and Cinema, it just really showed that folks just they weren't paying attention to the work. But the last thing I'll say about Cinema is this: that speech is fine. She can give a speech. Mansion can do a memo. But at the end of the day, you know, as me and my crew would say, you got to stop just selling wolf tickets. At the end of the day, she got to vote. Right. We can't. What they do is that they will give these speeches and then they hope that that will stop the process and that Chuck Schumer won't move it forward and actually bring this up for debate and for a vote. She's going to have to stand on that floor and not just give a speech, but actually debate her Senate colleagues about the merits, not just of the bill, but of filibuster reform. That's why the process needs to continue to move forward. Yeah, and, and we shouldn't uh, leave the Republicans out of this. I mean, because they are obstructionists. They are yeah. letting democracy fall. So Manchin and Cinema are certainly a problem. Some other senators, too, uh, who have not gotten the smoke that they perhaps deserve, who are also faltering uh, on, yes. on advancing voting rights. Um, but, Derek, you, you know, I, I wanted you a part of this conversation today because these type of ideological differences have always existed. Uh, as I'm sure my fellow panelists know, Martin Luther King's poll ratings were lower than Donald Trump's at the time of his death. Um, there have always been people to dispute uh, how you go about achieving equality in this country. It pained me to see the vitriol directed towards Black Voters Matter, who's been, I, I know fewer people more dedicated for power and equality for black people. Um, but Derek, you did opt to go to the speech. Do you feel uh, confident that this administration has done everything they can do to advance voting rights? Uh, and what is the plan now, um, now that we're here? Well, I think this administration has been lackluster in protecting voting rights. It came out the gate with a COVID package. Yes, we thought that was necessary. The very next thing they did was the infrastructure bill. But the infrastructure bill should have included election infrastructure. In WCB, we, we advise that, we push for that. If we can create an infrastructure opportunity in 2001 would help America Vote Act, given every state voting machine, increasing the requirements for ADA compliance and poll location requirements, we could have done the same thing with making sure that every jurisdiction had the type of machines necessary to look forward. Think about it. in 2001, we gave states money to buy electronic machines. None of us on this line will keep a computer more than five years, and yet we expect the states to still operate with those old machines. But with those machines as a requirement, you, you attach on all the requirements to carry out federal elections within what forced jurisdictions to do the same. So this, this administration has been lackluster. We had this conversation with them at the t when they first came into office. We had this conversation with the administration in June. We had this conversation in August. We had this conversation in September. I could go on and on. So at the end of the day, political parties are nothing more than vehicles. The black community, a vehicle for agendas. The black communities, we have a clear agenda. Protect our right to vote. Protect our, our young people on the streets from police brutality and council student loan debt. That is not attached to a political party. That is something that black Americans say we need desperately. And this administration have not stepped up in those three key areas. All right. Well, Angela, I want to get you in here. So we're going to go take a quick break. So keep it right here because this conversation is going to continue on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere.